All right, guys, we're gonna do a little uh, late night, Saturday night video. So, uh, we're ready to bolt the 1914 back together. Uh, oops, there goes that camera again. Can't make it happy. So we got the case all deburred, clearance, and uh, <clears throat> we're ready to go back together. We got the cam bearings in there. We're gonna go ahead and install the lifters next. Uh, we're gonna leave our bearing out of that side like I showed you guys before until we're ready to absolutely bolt the case together and then uh, we'll take the bearing out and test and make sure our cranks seated in the other half of the case properly then we'll put our bearing over here so let's go ahead and by start by uh, setting this case up we'll go ahead and put our lifters in there and uh, Get our lifter clips installed, put a little earl in there. We had to uh, wash all our parts and start over here. Had a little issue with the crank. Not fit the motor properly. And uh, I'm gonna go over that because uh, this problem's come up with the aluminum cases. Now I've uh, run into this problem one time and uh, I couldn't for the life of me figure out what the guy did, but now I know exactly what causes this issue. Uh, if you buy the new aluminum case and you find yourself having to use more than three flywheel shims, there should never be more than three shims to come up with the correct end play. But what happens with these counterweighted cranks in the new aluminum cases is the center main isn't machined, which we're talking about this main saddle. And the crank not come back far enough to set the end play, end play properly so you pull the crank back you put the shims in there and you know the standard three shims won't get it done you end up having to put a third shim because what's happening is the crank is not getting the end play set by the shims anymore it's using the center main as a thrust bearing so the counterweights up against this riding on this the whole time in those motors so if you got four shims in your motor that's why you got four shims because the crank sit in the center saddle so that is why and uh, I thought I'd share that with you you can use that information however you want this is the first time I've ever run into this problem with a uh, Volkswagen case and uh, I caught it you know and I'm glad I caught it and we're past it now we got everything clean and now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the motor so here we go we've already done this once Use our uh, secret sauce there. Let me get some gloves. So I got some cheap gloves here, and uh, we'll throw these on just so I don't get oil all over my hands. Because uh, tomorrow I might actually have to do some body work or something. I don't know if I can get out of uh, the house. So I got rid of the green car it left today. Customer's very happy. Got his baby back. And uh, it's gone. And I got the Ranger inside the building. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set some goals. You know, I've been trying to set goals. So I uh, made a goal of getting this case finished today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick to that. So we're going to go ahead and take our lifters and install them. Take our uh, oil, put a little oil on the so I the lifters, we put it in the case. And remember again, you want to make sure your lifters completely float. You know, you don't want them to bind in the case. They need to turn. Uh, these, well, that lifter's not a good one to show you. I just put oil all over it. And I put a little earl on the cam bearings so right here. You want to make sure you wipe it off on the back one. Don't let it drain into the... Uh, into the uh, channel back there where you're going to have to put silicone in a minute. So you want to keep that clean of oil. Okay, so the lifters are going in. We're uh, going up and down. And uh, these lifters have been notched for better oil control with a higher lift cam. So there we go. We have those installed. We'll set our assembly leave off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more Break in lube on these lifters. They've been sitting for a day or two, you know. Well, more than a day or two now. Time flies when you're having fun. I had that car come in and sort of uh, put a kink in the works, you know. Trying to get this stuff done. We're uh, 
you know, I can set some goals and accomplish some stuff during the week and try to get the building cleaned out. So now we're going to go over to here. And, uh, sorry for the bouncy cam. We're going to put our lifters in this case. Same process, you know, we want to make sure we oil our bearings. Not too much oil on that rear bearing. I usually take a little on my hand and just dab that bearing with it because if you put too much oil back there it fills that groove up and then your silicone is no good so, and that's a potential leak we don't want any leaks sometimes you get them but uh we're gonna make every effort not to so I don't know if you can see the notch in the lifter right there and what that does is the lifter travels a little out of, out of its extended range when you add lift to the cam and that lets the oil get to the top of the motor a little better. An old hot BW trick, you cut it right at the hole as long as you make a slot between this area to this area. That's a scooter trick. I can't show you too much, you know. I'll show you all the tricks and then uh, everybody will be fast. Alright, so we're going to put a little more luby on these. You know. Remember, this is cam lube, comes with the lifter manufacturer, and uh, they started making this stuff red because everybody thought that, hey, lifter lube is molly, and people were using molly grease on their camshafts, and they were wiping their cams out, and uh, the break-in is critical on a flat tappet cam. So, uh, you want to keep that in mind, you know, you want to uh, follow every precaution available. When you're assembling a motor, especially an older motor with a flat tappet cam, uh, they can be troublesome to get the cam to break in. Uh, comp can makes an additive you can uh, add to the oil. It's highly recommended. It's a break-in lube. And uh, it's just extra zinc and uh, pressure additives for the break-in process. And they say after the cam's broken, you can run any oil, but uh, I don't believe that, so... Okay, so here we have our case. We have our case with the lifters installed. We have all our dowel pins installed. We've measured them. We know they're right height. They're going to fit our bearing. They're not going to pinch it. Uh, the case is clean. We've got new seals on here. We have a double thrust bearing in this case. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll set the camera back. We'll unreveal the crank here and uh, we'll get the crank laid in the case over there first. And uh, next we'll go with the uh, other half of the case after we goof it up. So here's our crank all clean and ready to go. Okay, and uh, you know we got our bearings marked, all that good stuff. And uh, we got the center bearing in the case, which we're going to put a little earl on. Make sure we got Earl on everything. I want to make sure I get you in the picture. Should I get you a little closer, I guess. I don't know. This is hard. You can't ever tell how it's going to come out until you upload it, guys. Okay, we have our bearing installed. Center bearings installed. Dowel pins are in. We have our rear bearing here. And I've been through this on the last video. If I'm going a little too fast, you can go back to the last video. I have my bearing marked. Here's our uh, dowel pin location on the bottom. And I have them marked on the top to let me know the dowel pin's directly under that line. And these two are the center line of the case. So it just helps locate the bearing a little bit. This dowel pin always goes towards the back of the case. You know, it's always closest to the back of the case, which is the front flywheel side however you want to say it. So we'll set our bearing there. I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, oil on that journal. A little oil on this journal. So there we go. Just oiling it up. You know. Can't have too much oil. The shit will soak into the floor and uh, be gone tomorrow. So uh, we're not really worried about that. 
So we're ready to uh, take the crank out of the stand. Let me get on this side so you can see. Hopefully that's in the shot. So I hope everybody's having a good night tonight. I told the guy that I would uh, build this motor today. We're going to go ahead and stick to that and get it done. I know he's getting uh, close to being ready for this. Okay. that around Ugh, this may be a slippery there we go you gotta get it turned right or they can get hard to handle Set it down in there nice and easy so you don't damage anything. I'm going to take the gloves off. This assembly lube is uh, some of the slickest shit I've ever used. The break-in oil here. Uh, it's a new mixture of stuff I'm trying. And uh, it's pretty badass. I can tell by the way it, uh, you can't touch anything. So let me get a rag here. Clean rag. My towel. Won't tell Andrea what she won't know isn't her. So uh, we're gonna line this baby up. We know uh, this one goes right about there. We're gonna get our lines all in order. And then uh, you always start with a rear bearing, of course. I just got the front close and uh, use this rod to lift the crank up. And here we go, that just dropped into place there. And we gotta get the front bearing to drop in. Same thing, you know, you wanna lift up on the rod a little bit. Use that as a handle. And uh, now we need this front one. And there's that one. And uh, you know, rotate the crank. Make sure it turns in there. Let's see if we can turn, move the crank back and forth now. Couldn't do that before. And uh, now we're going to check it with our bearing to make sure the crank's in all the way. Just drop the bearing in there flat. And make sure I'm getting all this stuff. Yep. And uh, no rocky on the bearing. Our crank's in there perfect. You notice how it just dropped in this time a lot nicer. That's because it's not talking to us, telling us it doesn't like it. So, these motors will talk to you. You know, if there's an issue, usually that's something that takes your time. And uh, anytime you're spending time where you usually don't, just look at it, you know. Don't uh, pass it up, that's what I did. I didn't think much of it. I went on and got the crank dropped in there, but uh, if I would have looked a little bit and moved the crank around, I would have noticed the issue. I'm trying to get this rod to stand up here. This is hard to do sometimes. So next we're going to go ahead and install our cam. We're using a bug pack. Bug pack cam. And uh, the cam gear will have one dot on it. And uh, the dot should be at the top directly under this bolt and the lobe should be pointing straight down if the gear is on there correctly. So the next thing we're gonna do is rotate the crankshaft over and get it in position to drop the cam in. So we'll do that now. Oh yeah! It's hot here, boy. Hot and muggy tonight. I'm sure it's hot in a lot of places. And let's turn a little bit more. Should be real close right there. 
We already put some oil on our uh, lobes. We'll go ahead and uh, put a little more break-in lube on these. Yeah, it gets wiped off when you rotate the motor. So you want to make sure you got a liberal amount. You know, you don't want so much that it gets into the engine and starts wiping the bearings out though. Because the uh, cam lube does have an abrasive in it to match the lifter to the cam. Check my marks are dead on. Now we're going to put a little more oil, silicone, the other half of the case. Put our lifter retainer clips on. So we'll move the camera over here next. Hopefully, you know, you guys don't get totally bored with these long videos. They've been uh, running a little long lately. So, the first thing I like to do is put the lifter clips in. These are our lifter clips. You can use coat hangers to make these. These, uh, in theory, are supposed to hold the lifters in place so you can get the case half drop down. Sometimes they work, sometimes the lifters fall on the ground. So don't get disappointed if you buy those and they uh, don't work because it's 50 50. All right. So next we're going to uh, put a little oil on this case, oil, silicone. I'm using the black RBT, you know, and uh, just a thin coat is all you need. You don't need to get carried away. You get too much of this and then uh, you got issues. Don't ever put silicone on these uh, saddles. You know, you can put a little more on the back of the case. That's where your leak's going to be in the back flywheel area. Uh, this case here is pretty cherry as far as the ceiling surface, so we shouldn't have any issues with this motor leaking. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit of silicone goes a long way. I like this black stuff, it works very well. Uh, you know, I like to put a little dab right here in these uh, where the O-ring's going to sit. Not on the main stud, but just down in the hole here with your finger. You know, wipe it in there and it'll seal off the O-ring and seal that main stud up a little nicer. And it's looking pretty good. We'll set that. So our lifter clips are still in there looking good. We got our cam bearings in there. We got our center bearing in there. All our lifters are installed. Next thing we're going to do is put our cam plug in this half of the case over here. So, this is our cam plug. You want to make sure that you get the plug clean. I like to put the plug in recessed side out. Uh, that way if you got an automatic or you get something in your flywheel between the case and the flywheel, it doesn't compromise the plug. Uh, this way we you got a little leeway this way. So let's put a little sealer on this and drop this in. And, uh, basically you just want to you know, put a little bead on this. Don't get too thick because this will go into the bearing area if you get too excessive with the uh, silicone. So just, uh, you know, you want to cover it but don't get carried away. And uh, here we go. That's lubed up. I'm going to go ahead and press that into position. And uh, I'm going to take put a little silicone on the back half of this case. And uh, just, you know, my extra uh, precaution that it doesn't leak back here. And uh, that's usually the only uh, issue in the back of the case. So anyway, okay, we got the cam in there. We got the cam plug installed. We have our uh, cam timed. We have our uh, bearings fit it into the case perfectly and now we're ready to uh, drop the other half of the case on top here and uh, call this an assembly. 
So I'm going to go ahead and try to get my rods to stick. What you do is you try to squeeze these rods as hard as you can together. And sometimes they'll stand up and sometimes they won't. These aren't wanting to stand up. Everything's got to be perfect. So there we go. I'm going to drive the other case half and see if I can make this happen. go rubber hammer time tap 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 remember pull our lifter clips out and uh, now we're gonna put our uh, hardware on here uh, we're using all new hardware again uh, I didn't want to put you shit on the motor because of my mistake so we'll uh, put all new nuts and marshers and bolts and all that back on this again and I'll use that stuff on a stalker something that uh, is not so critical so I put a little sealer on the bottom of these washers face down silicone down you don't need to put it under the nut because uh, that can change the torque a little bit so just put a little silicone on the bottom of the washer and uh, face down, silicone down. Next we're going to go with our case nuts. You want to put your uh, six millimeter case nuts on next. Or six case nuts, center case nuts I should say. Can't talk tonight. They're actually 19 millimeter in diameter. And let's grab some of those new over here. Five and six. Here we go. You use the washer and the red sealer goes up. So seal up, nut down. A lot of guys will like take the case washer off, flip these nuts upside down, and do that. I don't like that kind. So this is the way I was taught. It's always worked pretty good for me and I'm going to stick to it. So you want to snug these up, you know, don't over torque them. These only get torqued to 27 foot pounds. And the main stud is something that you want to not over torque. It can affect your bearing life. So we want to make sure this still rotates. This is always, you know, the make or break time. Look at that baby spin now. You know, it was a little draggy before and it was trying to talk to me the whole time and I just wouldn't listen. I was being hard headed. And uh, it's right now. So we'll be able to set our flywheel. Uh, we'll set our uh, end play. Well, I have to have a flywheel machine for this still. So I need to get a flywheel machine and then we can set our end play. And uh, I have to get the flywheel for this crank machine. It's uh, made into this crankshaft. So we're putting our spring washers on now. You always use spring washers, you know, always. Spring washer under every nut on a Volkswagen. It's what locks the nut. Uh, American car have locking washers and uh, Germans use spring washers. So you want to be sure to, uh, you know, make sure you use a spring washer. I put a little sealer on these back two cam journal uh, washers, just a tad. There's two bolts in the back here, and uh, those are a cam journal. So those are in oil. You want to make sure you put a little sealer on those. Okay, we're going to clean our hands off again. You want to keep your hands clean so your uh, hardware doesn't get all nasty. You know, you want it to look like a new motor when we're done. I'm going to grab some new hardware here and start going to town. All right. There you go. 
So yeah, I figure this is a little, uh, like a little mini power hour. We wanted to get this done yesterday and you know, I had to do that bug and that took a lot out of me. It was sort of a big job. And uh, I'm to the point now with this motor where I need to just start setting goals. I have to do some cylinder heads. We got to put the rings on the piston cylinders and uh, you know, little stuff like that. And this can be uh, on its way to the happy owner. that do more we'll go ahead and tighten these down and we'll get the torque wrench out and we'll uh, torque these up now I never put the one in by the oil pump because uh, of course you want to wait till you get your pump in there if you tighten that bolt it'll uh, pinch the case too tight to install the pump so uh, tomorrow we'll get that installed these are 18 foot-pounds so Again, don't get carried away. That's not that tight, you know. Uh, you can torque these a little tighter, and you can also go to the 15 millimeter uh, head stud or no head bolts, head nuts for the eight millimeter stud, and uh, that's proved to be beneficial on some race motors. So, little tip you guys can do: you got a race motor, you can use the 15 millimeter head nuts. And uh, works pretty good. So we're going to snug this last bolt and then we'll get the torque wrench out. You've got 18 foot pounds. I'll torque the center ones first. 27 foot pounds on the six nuts, 18 foot pounds on these. All right. Never using a extension when you're using a torque wrench. It can affect the torque reading. You know, you want to keep the socket in the torque wrench. And if you do find yourself in a position where you have to use an extension, you want to calibrate your torque wrench with a, another wrench. I always like to set my torque wrench back on zero when I get done using it. Uh, just a little tip. So we're going to go with the big ones first. We'll start in the center. Crisscross. Recheck the middle ones again. Repeat your uh, crisscross pattern. Now we're going to move to the 13 millimeter. These are going to be 18 foot pounds, so we're going to back the torque wrench off. We'll go ahead and uh, torque these one more time here. All right, that's good. Now we're gonna go to 18 foot pounds. And uh, these you just want to go around the motor. Now I go to the other side. And then we're going to make sure it rotates. Like a dream, guys. Like a dream. 
So there we go. I'm all happy. We got our uh, motor assembled. One short block. We got a little more work to do before we can move on to the top end. I got to have the heads completed and uh, we'll get the cylinders fitted and we'll move on with this one. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it wasn't too damn long and uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.